Okay, so here's where I begin. I always, like with paradoxes, right? You always start with something that you can establish, something that everyone can agree on, and then you, um, and then you say, well, where can I take this logically, right? So here's where I'm going to begin. I'm going to say this. Okay, now this is, <coughs> excuse me, I don't need this. Uh, this is one of the first third laws that you learn. It's one of the very first ones, okay? So in fact, it's the way that you simplify. If I gave you something like this, something like this, you could simplify this, right? What would you do to simplify that? Like, actually give me the steps, don't just tell me the answer. <coughs> What would you, five how would you write that? Five times, five times two. Okay, so you actually already gone a step further. You see that in there is the square of five, which is 25. So you would, you're thinking this, right? But on the basis of that, you could break this third into two thirds. Do you see that, right? So that's why you would write that as 25 root two, which is five. Yeah, you're happy with that? So in fact, we, we do this loads. And so this is kind of an established idea, right? Okay, now's where it's going to get a bit tricky, right? So I'm going to try particular values of A and B, okay? I'm gonna say let A and B both be negative one, okay? Now I could actually choose a variety of different values here that would still bring out this paradox, but um, let's just try it anyway, okay? So what I get on left-hand side is the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one. So far, so good? Yeah. What am I gonna get on the right-hand side? I'm gonna get Square root of negative one times negative one. Yeah? Okay, now we define the whole idea of a square root is it's whatever number, like the square root of a is the number that if you multiply it by itself, you get a. You happy with that? Like that's by definition. So therefore, if you take the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one, whatever that is, what should you get? Negative one. Negative one right? like that's, that's the definition. Okay? But on the right hand side, what's happening over here? What's underneath the square root sign? which is just one, right? And the square root of one is one. So what's going on? On the right-hand side, should be plus or minus one. Right? Okay, now remember, right, if I say like the square root of 25, it's just five, right? Like as in that's, that's the way we define this. Um, and so this, this holds so far. So the question is, What's broken down? Like, that's a suggestion, but that has to do, well, actually, you're very, very close. Uh, obviously, there's a sign problem going on, but why is it that, like, usually we would say square root 25 is just 5, not plus or minus 5, okay? So, where is the problem in here? Okay, now, I just need to colour. The real problem is actually up here, right? It's right in the beginning. Everything else, like, numerically that I've done is all fine. To understand why this is a paradox, we've got to understand why on earth we say this in the first place. Like, this is not obvious, okay? Like, for instance, uh, it's fairly easy to establish that the square root of A plus the square root of B is not equal to the square root of A plus B, right? And this is a very common error that um, suits when they're first learning out thirds. They're like, oh yeah, root three plus root two. That's just root five, right? Like, and it seems like it works, like arithmetic, but it's not, thirds are different. So it's not at all obvious that this is the case. So I'm gonna show you what's often, almost never done, which is I'm gonna prove why, why that is the case, okay? So, you can leave it in the middle space, I'm going to uh, leave that there. And on the side here, we're gonna take this idea and we're gonna try and explain it, okay? So follow along with me. We're going to prove that, like where does this law come from? Okay, so I'm going to say, let the left hand side, let's just call it, um, let's just call it x, give it a name, okay, and the right hand side, let's also give it a name, okay, and this is something that happens in maths all the time, you've got two things, x and y, they both depend on the same pronoun rules, so they should be related in some way, right, the question is how are they related, so here's what I'm going to do, how do I get these two connected to each other? There's square roots. How do I get rid of square roots? Square. I square, right? So let's try x and let's square that thing, right? Now be careful, don't assume anything. This is what x is by definition, so I'm going to square it. Okay? Now think back, if you've got like two numbers and you square them, okay, then by definition, that's m squared, n squared, right? Because this, there's an intermediate line here. 
um, stuck in here. This is mn times mn. So you can see there's two m's, two n's. Are you happy with that? So therefore here, this is root a squared times root b squared. Happy with that? So there's a b. That's what I get when I square this guy. Okay. What happens when I square the other guy? That's the square root of a b, or squared, right? Which is also a b. Okay. Now I have my connection. Okay. So I've got x squared and y squared. They're equal to each other. That's really good. Okay. Now clearly, get my color back again. Clearly, x equals y. That's one of the solutions to this equation. Do you agree with that? Like if x and y are the same number, then when you square each one, no big deal, right? In other words, this, that's x, equals this, that's y. Okay, that's one of the solutions. But can you see it's not the only solution? Look more carefully at this, right? There's another solution to this. How can I make it more obvious? One of the things you should remember is when you're trying to solve things, don't divide through. Like, I'm dividing this by x and this by y. That's, that's a bad idea. It's dangerous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy over here, subtract y squared. Because now I can, what can I do to this left-hand side? This plus y is minus Yeah, this is um, difference of squares, right? So I'm going to factorize like so. And now you can see, I'll just bring it over here. Now you can see there is not one, but two solutions for x, right? There's y, which I already said. But there's negative y, which I get from here. Is that okay? So, what does that mean? Okay, that means that this, this is only half of the truth, right? It is true, x does equal y a lot of the time, but it only equals y when a and b are positive. If a and b are positive, this is all good, okay? So really what we're supposed to say is a is going to be greater than zero, and b is going to be greater than zero. If they're negative, then in fact, the square root of a times the square root of b, sometimes it's equal to not the square root of ab, but negative the square root of ab. Namely, depending on these guys here, what a and b are, right? If a and b are negative, then it equals something completely different, which is really weird. Most people just sort of take this for granted. Um, but if you guys go forward and you do extension to mathematics when you're in year 12, which I would encourage, well, we'll see how you go. <laughs> but if you go ahead and you do that, like this idea here and, and numbers which are, we call these imaginary numbers, when you combine them with other ones we call them complex numbers, um, understanding them well and not just assuming the stuff that you knew from like the real world, those rules, it's really important that you push on what you assume.